Good Wednesday evening to you and welcome again into our home. Stephanie and I are glad you are here. Just once again, I want you to know I cherish you and I love you. I really miss you. As I've said to many people, this has been the hardest time in my eight, over 18 years of ministry. Not being able to see you guys and connect with you, it's hard. And some days, you know, I, I, I love being your pastor. I love being a pastor, don't get me wrong. But some days I get out of bed and I'm like, is this a bad dream? Can it just be over? So hopefully one day it'll be over soon. But just know I pray for you every day. I love you and um, thank you for all you do for Stephanie and for me. Our devotion for July 22nd. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Therefore, we will wait. The, the, for the Lord, that he may be gracious unto us. Blessed are all who wait for him, Isaiah chapter 30. We should not only understand the importance of our waiting on God, but also realizing something even more wonderful. The Lord waits on us. And the very thought of his waiting on us will give us renewed motivation and inspiration to wait for him. It will also provide for us an expressible confidence that our waiting will never be in vain. Therefore, in the spirit of waiting on God, let us seek the, to discover exactly what it means right now. The Lord has an inconceivably glorious purpose for each of his children. If this is true, you ask, why is it that he continues to wait longer and longer to offer his grace and to provide his help if I ask or even seek after him? And, and then I have come to wait. He does so because he is a wise because he is a wise gardener who waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and is patient for the autumn and spring rains, James 5. God knows he cannot gather the fruit until it's ripe, and he knows precisely when we are spiritually ready to receive blessings for our gain and for his glory. And waiting in the sunshine of his love in what will ripen our souls for his blessings. Also, waiting under the clouds of trials is important, for they will ultimately produce showers of blessings. Rest assured that if God waits longer than we desire, it is simply to make the blessing doubly precious. Remember, he waited for a thousand years, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, Galatians 4. Our time is in his hands and, his, and, and he will quickly uh, avenge, those he, uh, uh, avenge those he has chosen, swiftly coming to our support without ever delaying even one hour too long. I, boy, gosh, I hate waiting. And I did a devotion uh, on July 10th on the anniversary of our daughter's death about waiting. But let's talk a little bit more about it. I hate waiting. If I go to a restaurant with Stephanie and they are, if it's more than a five or 10 minute wait, I say, let's go. I don't have time to wait. I'm hungry. I hate getting stuck in traffic and it's not about all the traffic being there. I just hate being stuck and not getting and moving and waiting. I I hate when I go to amusement parks and have to wait in line for a ride. I, stores, I always get so frustrated when I'm looking for the shortest line to check out in. And that's why I really love online shopping because you don't have to wait. But waiting, I don't know what it is about waiting. I just feel that I need to go. I feel the things that need to be done. And I think we all have trouble with that. Maybe it's not the same exact problems I do, but I see it all the time. People today don't like to wait. People don't want to wait this coronavirus out. Instead, they're pouring all their anxieties and their worries and opinions into not wearing masks or acting like there's nothing to worry about and going out and, and doing all these things like life were normal. People don't wait uh, for the outcomes to see what's going to happen when bad things happen, when relationships might be distressed, when people make bad choices, or you know, we're easy to say, uh, oh, we're easy to judge people and we're easy to say this, this, and this, instead of waiting and allowing to see how that situation will work out. We just cannot wait. And and a lot of times our impatient, uh, uh, impatience and waiting causes more harm than good. I mean, I see it all the time, you know, as a pastor, uh, as, as, as a, a friend, as, as what, a husband, I'll make a decision. And then, you know, we all do this. I, I, I'll make a decision in church or in leadership or whatever. And somebody will jump right in and they'll be clear to share their opinion and they'll get mad and they'll do this, this, and this instead of waiting to see what the truth is and how it comes out. Or as a husband, you know, you know Steph will do something and I'm like, well, what is she doing? What is she doing? I'm waiting and waiting. And then before long, I snap or say something I shouldn't. And you know how it is, impatience. Impatience, impatience is part of our human condition. And so therefore, we have trouble waiting on God. And that is also during this time of coronavirus, right? We have trouble waiting on God. Not just there, we have trouble in waiting for diagnostics to our tests. We have trouble in waiting for healing. We have trouble in waiting through the hard times of financial issues. We have trouble in waiting to see what the outcome will be in a worry or anxiety. And that, that t comes on to us more. We just have trouble in waiting. We're not good at it. We are impatient people. And I do believe that if we would get better at waiting and being more patient, a lot of the problems in our society and in our relationships and everything would be a lot better because we'd be less apt to react and more apt to just sit back and love. Thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. 
he doesn't mind waiting on us. He doesn't, does he? I mean, gosh, I have my thorns in the flesh. I have my pet sins I do all the time, and I'll do that sin, whatever it is, whether it's worry or anxiety or the thousand other pet sins that I do all the time, and then I'll ask God for forgiveness. I'll say, oh, God, I'm going to do better with your help. Help me to transform, and then before long, I realize, what am I doing? I'm doing that sin again, but God is patient and waiting, very patient. He sits back and he waits. He waits because he knows eventually through the power of his word and through the power of of sacrament, through the power of his Holy Spirit, I will be strengthened and I will come around. And he waits, pouring out his love and his grace and saying over and over again, you are forgiven. I am with you. I will work with you in the Holy Spirit. He waits because I, I may not see the fruition of being able to overcome those pet sins in this world, but when I get to heaven, he's waited and he will say, Congratulations, you are now a saint. You are completely forgiven. All your, well, we're completely forgiven now, but all your sins are gone. All your struggles are gone. You are now in perfection. And it all will be perfect. And God waits. He waits on us as we worry. He waits on us as we doubt. He waits on us as we treat others uh, badly. He waits on us as we react because we think we're righteous and have all the answers. And heaven forbid that person made a decision I disagree with and I'm better than they are. And I don't think you should be wearing a mask or I think you should be wearing a mask. So I'll ridicule you and on and on and on and on and on and on and on. It's all because we fail to wait on God. And when we fail to wait on God, we fail to share love. Thanks be to God, he's not like that. His love for us comes first and foremost in his grace as he sits and waits on us every day, as he interacts in our lives, as he forgives and restores and renews and loves us. Oh, if we could be like that in this world. Oh, if we could be like that in this world. And sometimes we do have to stand up and make tough decisions in relationships or with our health and all those things. And we don't maybe have time to wait because we have to act. And that's going to happen. And that's okay. We have to set boundaries in our lives. We have to make good decisions. But we also must realize that there are times when other people make decisions or when we ask for things and they don't happen right away that we need to be patient. We need to wait. We need to show love because that's our first priority. Not to judge, not to ridicule, not to make fun of, but wait. Just simply wait. After all, what's it going to hurt to wait? Because we know that Jesus is coming back and we have to wait on that, but we know that. We know that even if he doesn't come back in our lifetime, that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. We know that all things work out to the good for those who, uh, that trust him. And we know that he, there are things that happen in this life that we may disagree with or may not like. So it's okay just to wait, to wait for the outcome, to wait for us for the opportunity to share love, to simply wait. So during this time of overwhelming waiting, waiting for a cure for the virus, waiting for a vaccine for the virus, waiting to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Take heart in that God is already in the midst of it. And even though his answers and his actions may not be seen right now, above all of that, his main action is so evident. He is with you. He loves you. He forgives you. And he's preparing a place for you in heaven. And that's all that matters. That's really all that matters. So we take heart and wait. We wait in love. We wait in patience. We wait in joy for that great and wonderful day when Jesus will either bring us home to be with him in heaven, number one, or number two, we will see him coming in the clouds with righteousness and glory to call us to be with him forever. Come, Lord Jesus, and rescue your people. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a great night. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. Good night. I love you. Bye-bye.